Heavenly Father, we come to you in that wonderful name. The name that is above every other name. And that that name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We thank you, Lord, that today you have reign in this service. Holy Spirit, the service is yours. I want to thank you that you speak to your people today and say what you want to say this morning. We thank you, Father, that your name is healing and your name is life this morning. And we thank you that you have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give Jesus a great big praise this morning. He's wonderful, He's marvellous, and He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Well, let's just greet everybody in Phoenix. We want to welcome all of you watching online and also all of you watching online in Phoenix. And you know what I always tell you, and I can't tell you from here, but we love you this morning. And I love you this morning. And God bless you. Thank you for watching online. And I'm so glad that I'm able to cross it across there all the way in Phoenix. Isn't technology amazing? Let's give them a great big God bless you. And uh, you may take your seats this morning. And uh, I've got a word from the Lord for you. And I hope it's going to encourage you this morning. And it's one of those words... It's a little bit like, um, you know, when you take a rhythm and blues song and you play it backwards. They say, you know, rhythm and blues, your girlfriend leaves and your house leaves and everything leaves. But when you play it backwards, everything comes back. Amen. So everything's coming back to you in Jesus' name this morning. It might sound a little negative in the beginning, but I want to tell you this morning, everything's coming back. Everything's going to be good. And God's got you this morning. Hallelujah. And uh, my sermon message this morning is called, Are You Sharp? Are you sharp this morning? Well, you're all looking sharp this morning. Just tell the person next to you, you're looking sharp this morning, man. You're looking sharp. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Because you are looking sharp. And I want to just, I've just really come to encourage you and really come to remind you that you serve a miracle working God. Amen. You serve a miracle working God. Never forget that. You not only serve a miracle working God, but you serve a miracle, supernatural, saving God as well this morning. He saved you this morning, but He can save you from calamities. He can save you from many of life's obstacles because He's still the miracle worker. Amen. And so I'm going to start this morning with a story that I don't think you've ever heard. And uh, it's a story of, in about 1975 or 76. I was about 10 years old, and it's about the saving power of God. I was about 10 years old, and I went with my parents to America, and my dad used to go and preach in many churches, and in those days, we used to fly an airline called Pan Am. Now, those airline, that airline is no longer in existence, so I'm giving my age away a little bit here this morning. You know, us ladies, we want to stay 39. How old are you? I'm 39. Well... Well, as you know, I'm not 39, but we want to be 39 for a very long time, but we can't be. So anyway, I was about 10 in 1975 and 76, and uh, I'd gone with my parents overseas, and we flew Pan American to, to there. And then, you know, in those days, they had, well, what we've got here now is Greyhound buses and uh, you know, my dad didn't send these things ahead of him to say, you know, he wants to fly business class and he only flies first class and you've got to fetch him in a Mercedes and he only stays in these hotels. And, you know, some, you know, when we invite guests, sometimes they send us that. Some guests even say, well, 
you got to send us half, our, half the honorarium before we even get on the plane. And then you've got to give us the other half when we get there. Well, I didn't have parents like that. I had parents that lived by faith. Amen. And um, so when we got to America, we would, he would have been invited to all these churches, and then we would drive the Greyhound bus. And in those days, they didn't have cell phones. So you know how old I am. They didn't have cell phones. We didn't have the internet. We just had the telephone. And I think in those days, they had buttons. They used to have the ones that turned like that. But now they have had buttons, you know. We don't even have phones like that in our houses anymore. And um, so we went all over America. And my dad would preach in all these little churches. And people would get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And signs and miracles would happen. And you know, God was always, you know, doing something through Pastor Fred because, you know, he was just ready to get the whole world saved. And uh, so we had finished going through the trip and we were flying back. We got on the airplane. I can't remember. I think it was in New York doing the transatlantic flight back to South Africa. And um, in the middle of the whole flight, yeah, we are you know, in the flight. I was at the window. My mom was sitting next to me and my dad. I'm looking out the window at the sea and the clouds, and it's all looking wonderful. And uh, suddenly in the middle of the trip, we hear, like a, you know, sort of a tension is happening. Suddenly the air stairs starts to scream. And so let me just tell you, if you're in a situation the air hostesses are not going to help you. <laughs> They're more terrified than you are. I've been in it, I'm telling you. So the next thing, we've got air hostesses running up and down the aisles, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, maybe somebody's died on the plane or somebody's had a heart attack. You know, normally air hostesses don't run up and down on the aisles, eh? If you've ever been on a plane. So they're running up and down on the aisles, and anyway, so they disappear. And then the next thing, the captain's voice comes on the, through the speakers, ladies and gentlemen, we would just like to tell you that we have a problem with this aircraft. Please put your seatbelts on. Um, we have a serious emergency, and we are needing to find a place to land this airplane, and we need to land this airplane quickly because there is a bomb on this plane. Now, in those days, uh, I don't know if it was, there wasn't many bombs going off on planes, and I know today you're not even allowed to say bomb on plane because <laughs> they throw you off the plane. But I think in those days there was no protocols, and I, and I know in 1979 and what, there was a lot of terrorism going on in the world and a lot of um, conflict between Israel and Iran and all of that kind of thing. And in fact... Ten years after this flight, um, I think Pan American actually was blown up over Scotland. I think it was Pan American 101. So we were on this plane, and of course, everybody's now, you know, you're supposed to calm the passengers down. But now they're screaming. They're screaming. People are losing their minds. <laughs> they're saying, we're going to die. We're going to die. There's... If every, really, I mean, if you've ever been on an aeroplane and there's pandemonium, this was the time pandemonium was happening. So, you know, th that's why I'm saying to you, faith is the greatest thing that you as mothers can give to your children. Believing that God's word is true, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what you're going through, God's word is true this morning. Amen. I'm here to tell you that. And so everybody's losing their mind on the plane. And uh, I look over at my dad and mom and I say, well, don't worry, mom. If we crash in the sea, I can't swim. So they both look at me and go, okay. So my dad takes, we all hold hands and my dad prays. I can't remember the exact words that he prayed, but he said, Father, we just come to you today in Jesus' name. We are in this situation, but God, you are in every storm. 
And so I thank you right now for peace that passes all understanding. I want to thank you for peace in the midst of this storm in Jesus' name. And so we just held hands and, of course, the pilot came on again and he said, well, we've managed to find an air base and we are now going to do, be going to do an emergency landing on this air base. So obviously there's secret air bases in the Atlantic Sea that nobody knows about. So he says, and we're going to have to descend this aircraft very quickly so you will all have to go into the brace positions. You will now have to take your shoes off and any sharp objects that you may have because when we land, we're not sure if we're going to land in the sea or in the air base. <laughs> but um, you will have to eject the plane with the emergency chutes. Now, you, we've all seen those, you know, when you get in the aeroplane, they're on the front thing and you look at them and you think, what are these slides? It looks like fun. So anyway, we, he says, this is what we've got to do. So I'm looking out the window, and now the airplane is descending at, I don't know, it's, it's really going fast. And when you're in a situation like that, it almost seems like everything's in slow motion. I don't know if you've been in a, a car crash or something, and everything, it's almost like time slows down. But I remember still holding my parents' hands and my dad's engine was on. When I say my dad's engine was on, he was praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, because when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to say. When we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to say. Hallelujah. So he was praying perfect prayers for the situation that we're in. So I want to say to you this morning, don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't underestimate praying in the Holy Ghost. We are a church that prays in the Spirit. We're not, we're not ashamed of the gospel of, the, of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. And so now I look out the window and the plane is coming down and I was, I think we were sitting sort of behind the wing and uh, the pilot was letting out all the fuel um, on the actual wing. So all the jet fuel, I could see it flying out on either side. Apparently that's one of the emergency things that they have to do. So if you do hit the ground, there's not much fuel in the airplane to blow up and kill everybody. So now we jettisoned down to the airbase, and the guy behind us sees we all calm. You see, because God is your peace in the midst of every storm. So the guy behind and the, and the aisle behind, he shouts to Pastor Fred, pray for me too, pray for me too. So my dad leans over and prays for him. I can't remember what he was praying. And then the lady on that side, pray for us as well. Pray for us. You know, it's, it's amazing how when, we, when we're in situations, <laughs> we suddenly pray, pray to God to help. But we should have been doing that before we even got on the plane. Amen. Because God is not there just to, you know, help you in times of need. He's with you all the time. Amen. And so I, I don't know if my, if my dad led him to the Lord, but he was talking to him for quite a while. And anyway, there were still people screaming and carrying on, and there was still pandemonium. And let me tell you, the aerostasis, that's all I can remember. They were useless. They were you. Sorry if there's any aerostasis here this morning. I don't mean to... <laughs> undermine you. But the one was running up and down screaming, oh my God, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. <laughs> and then she had to run to the front and, you know, they got the special ones, you know, they got the special chairs. So we ended up landing on this airbase and, um, of course, the, it was a very hard landing. We all were in the brace position. Our shoes were off. 
They threw open the doors, those chutes came down. We all had to get off the plane and shoot down these chutes. You got to put your hands like this and then jump down. And uh, we landed and suddenly there was all these men with guns and, you know, it was like in the movies. They all had helmets and guns and they were all standing there. And we were all ushered into this building. They took all our luggage off the plane. And uh, then the bomb squad came and looked inside the plane. And well, to this day, I don't know if there was a bomb on the plane. Six hours later, they brought another plane and off we went. But they wouldn't obviously tell you if there was a bomb on the plane because you wouldn't have got on the next plane, <laughs> right? So whether there was a bomb on the plane or not, because we prayed... I believe that God saved us because there's a saving miracle power of God that's available to you, amen, to you and to me. And so this morning, I've really come to remind you, are you sharp this morning? Are you sharp this morning? In 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6 to 7, it says, this is why I remind you, this is what uh, Paul is saying to Timothy. Fan the flame, stir it up, rekindle that greatest, that gracious gift, that inner fire, that special endowment which is in you through the laying on of hands with those of the elders of your ordination. And this has been our scripture for the whole year so far, and I'm sure There's a reason that God is giving us the Scripture as a church. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but He has given us a spirit, the power of love and of of a sound judgment, personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind, and self-control. And then the other thing that Paul says to Timothy is fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith this morning. Don't fight with your mother-in-law. Don't fight with anything else. But we need to fight with this Word of God. That's why God's given it to us. Let's fight the good fight of faith this morning. And then Paul reminds Timothy of another thing. He says, do not neglect the gift. Don't neglect the gifts and callings that God has for each and every one of you. So are you sharp this morning? Look at your neighbor and say, are you sharp? Are you sharp this morning? Ecclesiastes 10.10 says, if the axe is dull and and it does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. You know, I believe this morning that God wants to restore the cutting edge in our lives. If you've ever cut wood with the chopper, you think, oh my God, what's this pastor's wife doing with the chopper now? I know she likes building. What is she going to be demolishing the the pulpit this morning? No, this is just a little um, demonstration of an axe. The most important part of the axe is the front part, right? And time spent sharpening an axe is never wasted. Time spent sharpening an axe is never wasted when you're trying to chop wood. But a blunt axe is a waste of time. I want to tell you this morning that you and I only have one life to live. We only have one chance at life We only have one chance to do what God's called us to do. We don't have time to waste. So I believe that prophetically, this axe represents the supernatural dimension of the Holy Spirit and our ability to have a cutting edge, your ability to have that extra edge that penetrates lives, that changes atmospheres, that changes cities and communities, but it also speaks of the power and the wisdom of God. We all need the power and we all need the wisdom of God. And everybody said, 
Amen and amen. You know, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't birthed just in a Bible school, and we've got an awesome Bible school. You need to attend it or reading books. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is you, was birthed in the upper room with 120 people while in prayer. The Holy Spirit came upon them with fire and they were energized with boldness to do great exploits. They were blunt men and women. Amen. They were blunt men and women, but when the Holy Ghost came upon them with fire, they became sharp cutting edges that turned their world upside down. Hallelujah. And God is looking for you today to be that sharp cutting edge. We still need the wisdom. We still need the power of the Holy Ghost. And we still need that sharp cutting edge in our lives because it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord this this morning in Jesus' name. But you know, family, and those of you watching in Phoenix, when we get involved in the things of God or we're serving in ministries, many times there are things that cause our accent to get blunt. Many things. We can even lose our minds altogether. But I believe God today wants to restore your cutting edge this morning. He wants to restore everything that he has planned for your lives. You know, there's many battles that we face in life, many questions that we ask, many things that we face, and many times we become weary in the battle. But I believe today that you're going to be sharper than you've ever been in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Kings 6, 1 to 7, it says, Now the sons of the prophets said to Elijah, Look now, the place where we live is near you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan River. Let us take from there a beam for the building and let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. And he answered, Go. Then one said, Please be willing to go with your servants. So he answered, I shall go. And so he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down some of the trees. And it happened. Let me tell you, things in life happen. Calamities happen. Things happen in families. Life happens. Amen. And it says here, And it happened that while they were cutting down a beam, the axe head fell in the water and he cried out and he said, Oh no, my master, it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where did it fall? Then he showed them the place. And Elisha cut off a stick and he threw it in there and he made the axe head float. And he said to him, Pick it up for yourself. And so he reached out his hand and he took it. It's an interesting story, this. If you look at the history and previously to this, There was Elijah and Elisha, and Elisha kept saying to Elijah, I want a double portion of your anointing. I want a double portion of your anointing. And Elisha said to him, well, you need to follow me everywhere. And when you see me go to heaven in a whirlwind and in a chariot, you will get my double portion anointing. And so, of course, Elisha did that, and he received Elijah's double portion anointing anointing. And so this morning, I believe that the double portion anointing that God is wanting to give each and every one of you, you watching on live stream and here this morning, it's an anointing of enlargement. Say enlargement. God is wanting to enlarge you. Amen. So he now had the legacy that Elijah, that Elijah had given to him, a double portion anointing. It's always been and always shall be God's intention for you to be enlarged in every area of your life. Amen. You know, this church wasn't just built out of a good idea. This church wasn't just You know, somebody woke up one morning. No, God gave Pastor Fred and Nell a prophetic word that to build a house of prayer for all nations. And here we are this morning. Here we are. It's a place of signs. It's a place of wonders. 
It's a place of miracles. Amen. There's a legacy of faith for you to take hold of this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So this axe represents the power and the wisdom of God. And if we don't have the head of the wax, the, the axe, all we have is the handle. And how many of you know to cut down a tree with a handle, you know, it's, it doesn't do much. Amen. But God is sharpening your axe this morning. You're going to be sharper than you've ever been before in Jesus' name. And I want to quickly, because we don't have much time, how do we lose the sharpness? What are the things that, you know, maybe are happening in our lives that makes us lose our edge, makes us lose the sharpness that we maybe used to have. Well, one of the things that I believe is prayerlessness. A prayerless church is a powerless church. You know, even Jesus had to go away and pray to hear what the Father had to say. He, says, he, used to say, he said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. So I want to encourage you this morning, you know, the place of prayer and praying in the Holy Ghost keeps your edge sharp. Amen. It keeps your head edge sharp. Then the second thing is no intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Well, what does that mean, Joy? That sounds very spiritual. No intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, when I'm saying this to you, I'm saying this to me because we're all accountable to keep our axe head sharp. Amen. We're all accountable for that. And um, it's no in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So how do you say, well, am I intimate with the Holy Spirit or am I not? And, and Sister Nell always used to ask us this. She would say, uh, what has God been saying to you? Ask yourself this. What has God been speaking or saying through his word to me this week? And if you can't answer that question, maybe you need to just check your axe. You know, your axe is getting a little bit blunt there. We need to ask the, ourselves the question, how's my relationship with God going? You know, we come to church on a Sunday and it's hallelujah, praise the Lord, brother, sister, glory to God. Everything is good and whatever, but we neglect some of the things. Amen. The second or third thing is maybe not surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Well, what does that mean? That's not surrendering to the Holy Spirit and his word is called obedience. None of us like that word, obedience. <laughs> obedience, if I, if, you know, if I say that, it's not a good word. We always want to do things our way. We want to do things my way, and then we say, God, I'm doing things my way, and then you must bless it. But God doesn't work that way. Amen. Maybe it's fear and intimidation. That's why our scripture this year is, you know, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. Maybe it's the bigness and the size of your problem. By difficult people, lots of things can intimidate us, especially now during these floods. We're intimidated by a lot of things. The other thing that can cause our axe head to get blunt and not work is um, neglect. You say, well, neglect. What, what are you talking about, neglect? Well, even Paul said to Timothy, and I read it to you, that don't neglect the gifts that God has given you. Don't neglect them. So what does that mean? Don't despise or consider of little value the gift that God has given you. Ungratefulness. God has not only given you gifts, callings, and destinies, but the person of the Holy Spirit so that you can walk in every plan and purpose that he has for you to get the job done. Amen. To get the job done. Then the other big thing, you know, you're walking around with your axe. You want to walk in God's wisdom. You want to walk in God's plans for your life. You want to have enlargement. You want everything that God's given you. But the other big thing that I've seen in my 56 years of being in church is uh, disappointments. Disappointments. 
Some of you are in Phoenix there and some of you are here and some of you are watching online. Disappointments can, you, can cause you to lose your cutting edge. Maybe you're disappointed in a leader. Many people who were once Christians serving God got disappointed. Amen. Some, some people are not even coming to church anymore. They're so disappointed. They just watch online now. You know, and it's very easy to get disappointed, to lose the passion, to lose the fire that you once had for God. Come on this morning. Come on this morning in this place. You know, I've been in church for 56 years, and let me tell you something. I have a thousand valid reasons why I couldn't, why I shouldn't serve God. In all those 56 years, I've got a valid reason. And I probably could stand before God and say, God, I've got this valid reason. I was so disappointed. (laughs) I was so disappointed with this person and that person. But you know what? The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread this morning. Amen. You're too anointed to be disappointed in this place. Now, I want to say this, and if I don't say anything else, because I know I've only got five minutes left, what people do should never change who you are. Stay generous. Stay patient. Stay kind. Regardless of what anyone else is doing, you can't let what people do determine who or what you will be. You can write this down too. I heard this saying. It says, when people leave you, your life doesn't come to an end, but their part in your life comes to an end. Amen. Come on this morning. Stop being disappointed. Keep your act sharp in Jesus' name. Amen. Offense. Oh, my Lord. Everybody in this world is offended. The Eskimos are offended with the Polynesians because they've got better weather than them. I mean, that's how ridiculous it is. (laughs) Offended. Everybody's offended. People are offended with their children. People are offended with their wives. People are offended. It's affecting your axe head this morning. Amen. It stops the enlargement and the power and the wisdom of God that he wants for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Come on this morning. God wants you to walk in power. He wants you to walk in wisdom. And he wants you to walk in abundance. Amen. In Jesus' name. Then there's the loss of joy. Have you ever met? I'm just thinking of John's joke. He always says, I've got joy. So, and I keep saying to him, please stop telling that joke. It's so irritating now. <laughs> Doesn't he always say that? And in the, I don't know. Anyway, but Christians, they always, you know, not always, some of them look like they've swallowed a lemon. You know, some of them look like they've swallowed a lemon. They're always so miserable. Um, I would, some Christians that I meet, I would be like, you know, I didn't even want to be a Christian because you're so miserable, you know. Loss of joy, that's an indication. These are all indications. I've I've lost the sharpness. I've lost the sharpness of my axe head this morning. I've lost the joy. I'm just, I'm I'm too busy for life group, sorry. Another church service. Do I have to, really? Another Another life group. Oh, no, you know. Always heavy, always miserable, always depressed. No, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength this morning. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Or having like a flippant relationship with God. You know, we just come on Sunday morning to put in the time. Got to put in the time, you know, one and a half hours. Got to just give God that. And then the rest of the week we do what we want. Amen. But that's not what God's plan is for you. Flippant relationship with God. 
Being religious. You know, this isn't a religious thing that we're doing here. This is a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Well, I wanted to ask you this morning, how do you get your sharpness back? You know, it's, that's what I told you. It's like a, a, one of those songs, if you play them backwards, everything comes back to you. Well, how do we get our sharpness back, you say, Joy? Well, find the place where you lost it. Where did you lose that sharpness? Was it in one of these things that I was just talking about today? You know, Isaiah asked them, where did you lose it? Amen. Where did you lose it? And he said, oh my gosh, he's lost it. It was borrowed. Let me tell you, you can't borrow anybody else's anointing. God has got an anointing only for you. You can't borrow it from your wife. You can't borrow it from your husband. You can't borrow it from anybody else. Because one day you and I will stand before God alone. And we have to answer to Him for the sharpness of our acts. We have to answer to Him. No excuses. Amen. No excuses. So he cried that it had been lost in the water. So just, you know, this morning, just take responsibility. Say, God, you know, I've been offended. I have lost my joy. You know, I, I am in fear. You know, there's things going on around me. I've neglected things. I've been disappointed. But this morning, the Holy Spirit is here to heal and to touch. Amen. And so Elisha did something. He went to the tree and he cut off a stick and he threw it in the water. And you know, that stick represents the cross. Amen. Come back to the cross this morning. It's very easy. Come back to His love. Come back to His mercy. Come back to His presence this morning. Amen. You know, the, the head of the axe fell to the bottom of the Jordan River. The bottom, bottom of the Jordan River. It was impossible for them to find that axe. The weight of that water was holding that axe under. Well, that's exactly what the enemy wants to do for, to you and those of you watching in Phoenix. The enemy wants the challenges and circumstances of our lives to overtake us and overwhelm us and cause our lives to sink to the bottom. But you know, I love Peter in the Bible because all of the disciples were sitting in the boat and uh, you know, when Jesus came walking on the water, Peter said, can I come to you? And Jesus said, come. And so Jesus stepped out of the boat. I mean, so Peter stepped out of the boat and walked to Jesus on the water. Amen. We were called to be on the water walkers, not on the boat talkers. You called to be an on the water walker, not an in the boat talker. All of the other disciples, they were all wonderful and all. The only disciple that got out the boat and walked on the water was Peter. Amen. He wasn't just sitting on the boat talking and Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. He, was, he walked on the water, and that's what God's got for you. You're not going under in Jesus' name. You're going over. You're the head. You're not the tail. You're above. You're not beneath. You're not under the circumstances. Amen. Whatever is under Jesus' feet is under your feet this morning. Whatever is under Jesus' feet is under your feet this morning. So I want to encourage you this morning. Come back to the cross. Come back to the burial and resurrection of Jesus. You know what happened? He threw the stick in the water. The axe head floated and the axe head came to the shore. And Elisha said to the man, pick it up for yourself. Pick it up for yourself. This morning, you need to pick up the things of God. You need to pick up the promises that God has for you. You need to pick up every plan and every promise 
that he has for your life. That ax head floated. You know, iron, if I throw this in the water, iron doesn't float. In fact, the King James Version says it actually swam. You know, God will defy every law of nature to get the supernatural miracle power of God to you and your family. He'll defy every law of nature for that in Jesus' name. Because God has caused you and I to live in victory. The axe head was under the water. The, he threw the stick, which represents the cross. The axe head came out of the water and they put it back on the axe and carried on wor working. But you know what that speaks of? The resurrection power of Jesus. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead this morning dwells in each and every single one of you. You're not under the situation. You're going over. You don't have to wait to have victory. You already have victory because victory lives on the inside of you and His name is Jesus. He's still the King of Kings. He's still the Lord of Lords. And you come to the cross this morning. Don't just this morning we celebrated His death and we had communion, but it's His death, His burial, and His resurrection. Never forget we serve a resurrected Jesus this morning. Amen. So be a builder this morning. Be a builder of the kingdom of God. And I believe this morning that everything that has been lost in your life, everything that has been stolen in your life is coming back this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, and I love this scripture, helps us not in our weakness, in our weaknesses. Not, if I ask any one of you here, you'll say, Joy, I have a weakness. I have a weakness. Joy has a weakness. We all have weaknesses. But isn't it wonderful to know that we serve a supernatural God who can help you in any weakness that you may face, any calamity, any situation, anything that you're facing this morning. God has a supernatural miracle for you. Amen. You just need to take it this morning. Just like the son of the prophet took the accent, put it back on and carried on working. Come on. God has that plan. God has that purpose for you. And He's giving you the wisdom this morning to walk in that plan and to walk in every promise that He's promised you. Amen. Let's sing that song this morning. And could we all stand? Let's stand in this place this morning. I don't know about you, but I've decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back this morning. Have you decided this morning? Come on. No turning back. 